Uh, Ches here, I'm at sax.co.uk and we've been trying out a few saxophones today. So something um, I've been meaning to do for a while on this channel is to talk about the legendary Mark VI saxophone. So um, these are so reputable and they are sort of for diehard saxophonists. Um, they are so expensive because they're vintage and they're beautiful. But when I say they, not all of them, um, it's almost like buying a vintage car. You know, it's just because the shell of it looks good, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to break down. Similarly, it might look really beaten up and rusted, but actually goes like a trooper. <laughs> So, we have two Mark Sixes here of similar price. Um, I've gone for tenner today. It's a tenner day today. And the idea is for me to show you that you, for goodness sake, was not buy a Mark Six saxophone from eBay, Gumtree, Amazon, wherever you can find it, Tommen or something. You don't just click a button because you see Mark Six and you think, oh, I can afford it. You need to try them because everyone is different. Um, and some of them aren't worth anything, so they might charge a lot, but actually if the bodies become misaligned, you know, it's really difficult to get one that's in good condition these days. Um, these two are particularly interesting, so they're similar price. This one is uh, gonna set you back 6,000 pounds. I mean, that's a stinger. Pretty sure I bought my car for that. I did, that's gonna get you quite a nice car these days. Um, uh, so it looks in good nick actually. If you look at the body, it's it's in beautiful condition. Um, and uh, I had a little play before this video. It is beautiful. It's quite different from my setup. If you want to know more about my tenor setup, that should be popping above your head now. I've done a video above your head, above my head, um, just there in whatever California, and this like video pops above your head. So let's have a listen to it. I'm faffing around. <laughs> So they are beautiful, husky, warm. This is my experience with them. And this crosses over to alto as well. Um, I find them like beefy round toned, beefy, warm sound. If you get what you pay for, with most things in life, really. Now, what's really interesting is the comparison between two of them. So I had to, I know it was nice and smoky at the bottom there, but I had to work pretty hard for that. And if we just look at the top range. <laughs> in the top range, it's reasonably thin. You've got to work quite hard for it. So if you were so as to throw another 500 pounds at the situation to the six and a half thousand pounds, I mean, that is a lot of money to spend on a sax isn't it? You've got to be a pretty diehard saxophonist, but it is a beauty. Now you can see this one isn't in such good condition. Um, it's got several bits that don't quite match color-wise, so I think it's had a few replacement parts. It's got a lot of tarnish around the back um, and where it would rub against your thigh and stuff, all the lacquers come off. But I'm not, I'm not really funny about aesthetics. I did a video actually on um, aesthetically pleasing saxophones. So um, like your kind of silver one, you maybe your uh, silly plastic ones that come in different colors. I did a video on that, which should be popping above my head now in case you're interested to nip across and have a look at that. Uh, I'm not so into that. Oh, we've got someone playing next door. So um, I'm gonna cut there and cut back in again. Back. Um, okay, so I just wanted a little bit quiet so you could really hear the difference in the tone because I've just got a little lapel mic with me. Um, so we've got another Selma Mark VI here. And I was just saying about how the body of this one actually doesn't look um, as in good condition as that last one. And this one's another 500 pounds. But the tone, have a little listen. Oh, it's got its little security tag on it. If you 
were to say to me, got an extra 500 quid, this one's going to make your life lovely. I'd be like, yeah, I'll find 500 quid. Can I give you my kidney? Yeah, this one is just so much better, so much better. Um, the action's all the same, you know, it's the same saxophone, but like I say, with vintage cars, it's worn in, um, it's had years of being taken apart, put back together again, the amount that it's been played, the amount that's been looked after, the conditions it's lived in, it might have lived in different countries, it might have lived somewhere really humid, it might have lived somewhere really dry, it might have lived somewhere really cold. Um, this is a beautiful horn and they're only charging £500 more for it, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot. So moral of the story, do not get suckered in by the label. First of all, I'd like to say that I don't, ha I could afford this saxophone, I thought that's not supposed to sound arrogant, but I don't have this saxophone. I have a Yanagazawa because first of all, I'd say about Mark's sisters, they take a bit of work. Um, you have to really know your horn um, to be able to control all the top tones and the intonation. And second of all, they are all completely different. Do not buy one online. Make sure you go to a reputable shop that has cleaned it up properly, um, like sax.co.uk that we're in now. Um, make sure you go to a reputable supplier and you try it out, preferably if you can, compare it to some other saxophones as well. So you really know what you're doing before you put your hand in your pocket. Hope that was useful. Give it a thumbs up if it was. And I will see you in another video soon. Peace and love, people. See you later. So I am serious about this subscribing thing. Hit that button. Do it. Do it, or I'll drop some I will. I will. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll. <laughs>